Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. So um, this is the uh, ARPA Assessment Committee special meeting uh, today on Wednesday, January 5th, and we are starting the meeting uh, at 4.31 p.m. Welcome, everyone. Uh, a call to order. Let's begin the, uh, the meeting. Um, first of all, um, approval of the agenda. So uh, that is the agenda that we, uh, we sent out. Is there, are there any questions about it? I know there's a special meeting. We can't change too much here at all, uh, but um, just take a look at that. I hope you've all been able to take a look at that before. Yes. All right. I'm making a motion to approve the agenda. Well, the only thing I was going to point out is I don't believe there are any minutes from the December 15 meeting. Did anybody do minutes? I know I didn't. I didn't so, either. Okay, so there are no minutes. So I just note right. that. Yep, yep. I, th I thought I'd put that on to discuss that if we needed to, uh, if, if we needed minutes. So, uh, so okay, so, um, I mean, so we have minutes. the video, so I could go back and create minutes for the meeting. I would prefer not though, you know, it, it's not a meeting I wanna revisit, um, but I would if I had to. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. Do, do you guys think it's necessary? Legally, you guys have to have minutes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to have minutes of every meeting. Okay, so I'll go back and do them. Okay. We have the recording, so. Okay. Um, there was, a, and tell me if I'm allowed to do this uh, around uh, uh, agenda item five, when we talk about uh, Connie. Um, since there's been so much movement uh, here and there, and um, I'd like to make a motion to, to, to discuss who today is actually on this committee today, just to be clear, um, if that's okay to do on number five, um, when we talk about Connie, it might not be. Nothing I think there? It's okay to, with me. Yeah, okay. I think it's, a, it's relative. Okay, okay. So approval of the agenda. Do I have a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So here we go. So uh, agenda is approved. Uh, so uh, so uh, minutes from the December fifteenth meeting. So uh, so Patricia, you have that uh, in hand. Um, uh, you can. I'll uh, take care of it and thank you. submit them. Yeah. Okay. Any anything else about that meeting or those minutes? with this group. Okay, uh, moving to number four, public comments uh, about anything that's transpired here. Um, no public comment. I, I have one. Yes. The, um, I tried to access the Google Drive and it wasn't open to the public. And I, I sent a, a request. I didn't check to see if it was opened now, but... Um, so that needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The ARPA. Barbara, um, who set up the Google Drive and who manages it? Okay. I set up the original Google Drive for our committee and all yeah. the documents or a lot of the documents in there are working documents. So they're not public. But the Google Drive that I think Lynn is referring to might be the one that was part of the agenda. Is that correct? Okay, so that's a separate Google Drive that whoever created this agenda created for just documents associated with this agenda. That's what that Google Drive is. Okay. So I don't know who set that one up. Was it me? Maybe Joyce. Maybe. Um, but do we need that Google Drive if it's only related to today's agenda? No. Okay. So. Okay. So then the question is um, to follow up Lynn's question, is there, or should we create one if there isn't a publicly accessible Google Drive? with ARPA documents? Um, I Personally, I think it might be a little redundant because we have public ARPA documents on the town website. When you go to our, our page or whatever it's called on the town website. 
So those documents are all public, but our working documents, as I stated earlier, are not public documents at this time. I and see. that's what's in the other Google Drive is just for our committee. Hmm. There are two um, Google Drives. Okay. Could I just chime in here for, uh, um, <clears throat> my understanding was that um, the documents that are in the Google file for the committee are accessed through um, ARPA committee uh, at town of Kent, um, Connecticut. And the other uh, documents are accessed through ARPA uh, town of Kent, uh, Connecticut. I mean, am I, is that correct or not? Hmm. The Google Drive that I set up, I invited every participant to. So as I invited you and the other participants, they could access the Google Drive that's just for our committee working documents. So I'm not sure how you access it. You should be able to access it through a link that was sent to you through email, through an email. Um, that is how I access it through the link that I was sent. Uh, yes and no. Um, I've been accessing the, um, the documents in, um, in the Google file going back to October, okay? I don't really have a direct way of accessing the Google documents in the file um, through a link. What do, you mean you go, what do you mean you go back to October? I, can you clarify that? I don't know. Yeah, I, um, there was an email um, that I had gotten in early October, which um, something, something changed afterwards. So um, I still use that earlier link to access the information in the file. Um, that's how I've been how, how I've been accessing the infor, information. Um, if there's a quicker way of doing that, then I'd like to know about it. You should be able to take that link and move it to your desktop, and that would give you immediate access just from your desktop. Oh, because I use a laptop. I'm, I'm on a laptop now, mm -hmm. and I generally use a laptop for all of a, a Chromebook for all my, um, for the, all the meetings. Would that make a difference? I don't know, try it. Try to see if you can just move the link from the email or copy the link from the email onto your desktop. Yeah, cause I, I've gone over this with Connie and um, <laughs> she was helpful to, to some degree but it still hasn't been worked out. Mm. So, um, you know, I access the things in the file, but um, it's it's kind of like it takes a while in order for me to access it. In, in other words, it's kind of an indirect way of doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something to work on, you know. Just thought I'd mention it. Okay. And Lynn, I can I can address you again here. Um, the the two documents that are in today's Google Drive for this particular meeting are in the Board of Selectmen Google Drive. For tomorrow's I, meeting. Yeah, I just checked. Um, yeah. And I can see them now. So I, I'm guessing Joyce must have responded to my request and opened it up. Oh, OK. OK. All right, good. My, my only point is don't put it on the agenda you know, that's open to the public if the link doesn't work. You know, So that, I mean, if you're going to share documents with the public, then they need to be open to the public. Thank you. If not, yes. and don't put it on the agenda. <laughs> that was probably just an oversight. I don't think there was anything intentional with that. Um, I'm sure Joyce just, um, you know, the link wasn't live or something. I don't know. Um, but it's good to know. Okay. That when we do that, we should make sure the um, that the materials are accessible by whoever wants to see them. Agreed. Anything else? 
We can move on to number five. Reinstatement of Connie Manis as chair of the ARPA Needs Assessment Committee. How to proceed. Um, so, um, oh, I hope you can still see me. My internet is unstable, it said. I'm still there, okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, discussion about, uh, about uh, Connie. And Connie, thank you for, for being here. Um, I think the only thing that really has to happen is that the Board of Selectmen have to reappoint her to the committee and maybe there's some sort of a motion we can make now to say, pursuant to that action, we nominate Connie to resume her role as chair. And that way, the minute that happens at the Selectmen's level, which I think is going to be tomorrow, then automatically Connie would be chair again. Okay. That's on like a plan. Okay, yes. so Barbara, you want to make that motion and I'll second it. I okay. Mean Barbara. Uh, pursuant to action taken at a board, taken at a subsequent board of selectmen's meeting, I nominate Connie Manis to be to resume her role as chairperson of this committee. I second that motion. All in discussion? favor. Is there any more discussion? No. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you all. I'll be at the meeting tomorrow to hear <laughs> how it goes. Thank you, Connie. I'll be there too. <laughs> um, I'd like to make uh, another motion. Is I think it's relatable here um, to just again specify who is on this committee as of this moment, <laughs> um, just, just so it's clear to. To, to everyone. Um, uh, so my motion is, um, the motion is uh, we recognize the current members of the ARPA uh, Assessment Committee as Patricia Orris, Barbara Herbst, Joe Agley, Glenn Sanchez. I would concur with that. I'm not sure we need a motion. Okay. We're not if taking we any action. We're not taking any action. So just, just, just to state. Yeah. Just to state that, okay. If we don't need a motion, we don't then. Okay, okay. All right, on to number um, six, uh, discussion of a replacement for Matt Starr. So uh, so in, in the drive here is his resignation. Uh, do we need a motion to accept that or is that, we don't have to do that. I, I don't think we have a choice really. Um, maybe the selectmen might want to selectmen. make yeah. a motion to accept it, but. As far as discussion of a replacement, I'm thinking that it would be good to get someone else on the committee that represents a facet of the community that we that isn't represented now. So maybe someone to represent the nonprofit sector or the ecumenical sector or even the social service sector. Hmm. That's my thinking. Would we have to do a public call for volunteers? I think that's up to the selectmen though. They're the ones that actually appoint the people. Yeah. So Glenn is our basic, Glenn is our representative to that board. So he would take our information back to that board and present it that way. That's how we get information back to that board. And a public call for volunteers, I'm assuming, is um, uh, through the newsletters, uh, uh, Jean's newsletters and the website? Probably, most likely. Those are the ways? Okay. It can probably be posted on Kent community pages as well. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, I, um, I have a name that I'd, um, that I'd like to submit, you know, for um, for a possible replacement. Okay, then yep. I think we just submit it to Glenn and Glenn brings it back to the board as an idea. Okay, um, you know, um, this particular person has, um, has a background um, financial um, and I have, I have talked to them and they are, are interested in serving on this committee and um, yeah, so I'd, I'd like to um, submit the name. Go ahead. Okay, um, 
His name is uh, Craig Bibb, spelled B-I-B-B. -B. I don't know him. Does anyone know him other than Joe? No, I don't. Um, I, um, I can get more background information on him. I mean, he has been, uh, you know, I know him through meetings, um, certain events, um, that kind of things. And, um, you know, um, I can talk to him as far as like his, uh, um, his background, his occupational background. And I know he's, um, he's pretty intelligent. Um, you know, I, I, um, I can't, you know, give any more information. Uh, what is it, Patricia, that uh, you're interested in seeing a resume? No, um, no, 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 no. Um, just that, you know, if anyone knew him other than you, um, and he is a full-time resident of Kent. Uh, yes. Um, you know, I, um, <laughs> Um, you know, it's somebody that um, that I happen to know, like I said, through groups, um, I can always get more information or, you know, about his background, uh, but I do know he's uh, in the financial, you know, in the fa financial field. And in fact, I, I just had a conversation with him this afternoon before the um, before this meeting. And I, I asked him about uh, and he's. Um, you know, he takes an interest in civic, um, you know, events and uh, not events, but matters. So, um, you know, I, I can ask him to uh, supply the committee with um, some more background information. You would actually need to supply it to the selectmen. I think that would be the most appropriate. And just curious, what sector of the population do you think he would be representing? Just the general population or the business sector or um possibly a Kent resident just the general population um i'd like to put forth a concept that someone from the kent community fund gets put on our committee i think they would be good representatives of the social service sector of the town they would have their pulse on, or their finger on the pulse of the needs from that aspect I think that's a fine idea. I think that um, I know Ruth is on that and Catherine Backrack. I'm not sure who else, but someone from the Kent Community Fund would certainly have um, a point of view that is important to our committee. So um, I like that idea, Barbara. Yeah, and I'm thinking if the selectmen's meeting is tomorrow, I don't know how much time you have, Glenn, but maybe you could reach out to one or two of these people and see if they would be willing to serve that way. When you presented that to the selectmen, they could automatically appoint them or not if they're not interested. There's no point in putting forth a name if they don't have time or they aren't interested, so. Yeah, so my question is, if we if, if we go, um, you know, public with a call for volunteers, yet we have some specific people in mind, um, should, you know, how much time should we should we allow for volunteers uh, public for a public call? Um, you know, one day doesn't seem to be too much, but we do have some interest here already. Um, what's a time frame for for uh, for replacing Matt Starr? Well, I, again, I think this is information that we don't get to decide. I think it's a selectman's decision. And so it's going to be up to the selectman to decide whether they just take these two, like, just let's, for the sake of this conversation, let's just say Mr. Bibb is interested and Ruth Epstein are, is interested. So tomorrow with the selectman's meeting, you put that forth that they're interested. The selectman may decide to just appoint those two people and not put out a public call. Yeah. Okay. I think, I, I I think it's a variable situation. Um, yeah, I don't think we need a public call again. We had one at the start, and that was how you all ended up with Joe and Matt and Connie and I. 
um, I'm not sure we need to do another public call if we have people who are aware and are gracious enough to give up their time, um, I would vote to just accept them and move forward and not waste any time doing another public call. Um, that's just my feeling about it because we do want to get to the end of this process at some point. So do a public call, wait a month. I don't know. It just seems to prolong things unnecessarily. Agreed. Agreed. Joe, you had something? Yeah, I was just, uh, just to mention that um, this Craig Bibb, you may have gotten a preview of him on, there was a, a meeting December 3rd, a Zoom meeting. Um, I forget what the topic was, but um, he was on that meeting, um, you know, <laughs> if that helps uh, kind of to place Is him. it a board of selectmen meeting? No, Patricia, it was, um, it was a town was meeting, I believe. Yeah, the mm -hmm. town meeting. It was a town meeting. Town meeting on the budget oh. transfers for legal. Uh, okay. I looked him up after that meeting. He lives on Lake Warma. Hmm. So. Okay. And we're okay with, um, with two members, because I was going to bring that up. Um, a replacement for Matt Starr is, is one, and that would lead to six people. Do we want a, an odd number of people here? I don't know how voting has been, if, you've gone, if, if, if issues have gone to votes in this, uh, in this committee, um, but a seven, a seven might be a good number um, in case of a tie break. Um, we haven't had any issue, but I don't have a problem having seven people versus six. I think that's, that would be great. I agree. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. I like that. So, uh, so should we have, um, uh, so should we have Mr. Bibb and uh, um, uh, the other person, whoever that might be, uh, email the board of selectmen tomorrow? Like, is that is that how this works, or can I just bring Glenn, up? Do you want to call Ruth, or I could call Ruth if um, you have a full plate. And then I can let you know what she says, either or. I'm why, don't you give either. Ruth, why don't you give Ruth a call and see what she says? Yeah. Yeah. And Joe, if you want to reach out to Mr. Bibb and do the same thing, and then if you both report back to Glenn before the meeting, then he can go to the meeting with this information. Sure. I'll, I'll give him a call tonight. Great. Thank you. Okay. 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 I think we're done with, uh, with number uh, item number six. Uh, item number seven, um, the status of the survey. Who has access to the survey results and Survey Monkey's commentary on results? Okay. When will those results be loaded onto the ARPA Google Drive? How do we proceed with compilation and report preparation? This is where you are all experts and I am just learning. <laughs> so uh, I know a little bit, but please all bring right. me up to speed. This is for you. So Gene turned the Survey Monkey information over to me. So I have access to it. I think that's fine. Um, there were to date 159 submissions of which 13 were paper. And those only, at to date, only one of them have been entered into the Survey Monkey. So the other 12 need to be added in. I got access today. So I went in and I looked at some of the statistics and it's a lot of information and I still have, um, percolated out exactly the best way to display it other because the way that they display it in the survey monkey right now is they show each question of the survey and then the statistics next to it so it's kind of long and I was hoping to compartmentalize it just a little bit to make it easier to see what the trends are but on top of that before I get too deep into that I want to make sure that we all agree when we should end the survey so that we have a cutoff date. But having said that, I think we kind of need to wait until Connie's back on board and we have our full committee to move forward with that. So I think for today and until after your meeting, the selectmen's meeting tomorrow, we should just leave the survey alone. Um, I can tell by looking at it that the majority of the responses were received right when the survey was launched and the responses being received now, there's maybe one or two 
it's very small, if any. So the only other thing that we could do is maybe put out another push to say, if you haven't filled out the survey, please do so. But again, we don't have a real cutoff date yet. So maybe we should wait until we have a cutoff date to do that. I don't know. What Was there ever a cutoff date discussed earlier or no? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Do you remember, Patricia? No, I don't think we established a firm cutoff date. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we we intended to do the focus groups on January 22nd. So um, it would be good if we had data from that, the surveys and the focus groups completed at the same time. So it could possibly be like, I don't know, third week of January or end of January. Mm -hmm. And then we give ourselves February for compilation of um, information and um, recommendations. So that's a possibility, but I think you're right until we have Connie back um, in full force and our new members, if any, um, we can reserve that decision for them. I'm in favor of I would be okay with you inputting the data in long form for the committee members, because for me, I would like to read it all for myself, kind of, and make my own um, determinations about trends and whatnot. I don't know, it just would make me feel more confident in my decisions going forward if I was able to see the raw data in its complete form. Sure. I don't know how others feel about that. Well, um, our, um, <clears throat> will we be getting a preview of, um, of the survey? Um, you know, like a preliminary report or anything like that before before it ends. I I don't think we've discussed that. I'm not sure what the relevance of that of doing that would be. Uh, the well, information isn't going to change, and our approach to the information won't change. Well, uh, for one thing, what's the total number of responses that have been gotten so far? Is that 159, maybe I wouldn't speak clearly early enough. It was, we've received 159 of which 13 have been paper and the other 147 or 140, whatever it is, six have been electronic. So um, going with that number now, would that, now the, the survey is still open. I, I understand that. Yeah. So, um, would that, number be able, would you be able to use a number like that to come up with um, uh, conclusions, um, you know, relevant con conclusions statistically? The Survey Monkey is a program that actually does all that compilation for us so that we don't have to worry about crunching these numbers or coming yep. up with percentages. It did all that work for us. I guess what maybe what you're asking is, is 159 a viable sampling? It, it's what we got. So it's, it, it has to be a viable sampling. I, I don't think we're gonna throw it away. Yeah, no, the reason why I asked that Barbara was that um, Sharon did, a, did it, well, they did the same, <laughs> same survey and the number that they came out with, I think was 59 responses. So they had to kind of extend period of time to, to get more responses because it wasn't, um, as they say, st statistically significant. So that's why I was asking the question of whether or not the number uh, would be, you know, would, would be able to get uh, valid uh, response, you know, results. And do you know how many more responses they got after they extended it? Probably not a lot more. Oh. Um, no, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, that's, I guess that's just a discussion we'll have to have when we decide when we're going to cut off the 
survey. I mean, I was sort of happy with the 159 number. I thought that was <coughs> a decent number of people who took the time to fill out the survey. How many people did the PNZ have? Do we remember? I don't remember. I don't. I think it was I, around. Annie remembers. <laughs> 400. I think they had like 400 people. The PNZ. Oh, so mm -hmm. compared oh, to them, then, yeah. 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 Quite a few more conversation. I think it would be really helpful for us to look at the responses before we do the focus group. I think that it's fine to leave it open after the focus groups. And I think that we're never going to get data that we're going to be putting out there as statistically it's significant. Yeah. This is an opportunity to hear from people in town, but we're not going to use that to characterize our entire town, we wanted, we were not really looking for data that we could generalize. We were looking for responses about people to characterize people's experiences. So it doesn't matter if we got 50 or, you know, a thousand, uh, but the more people that do it, the better information we're gonna have about those people. So we might as well try and get more people to fill it out. But I'm not that concerned about where our eventual number lands. And I do think 159 is pretty good. So will the, will the survey monkey, will they be able to take all the data and crunch all the numbers and present it like in, a, in like a, a graphs and all that other good stuff? Good. Any more questions? And I agree with that. There will be subjectivity to it because it isn't like a survey. Of, um, how old are you? How many years schooling did you have? How many? It's more about people's experience and feelings and um, specific losses their business or their household um, endured as a result of COVID. So that's a rather subjective um, survey that I think it'll be up to us as astute readers and, um, and people who can um, extrapolate from information to, um, to understand what the general feeling in town about COVID is towards these ARPA funds and what their um, what they believe the best way to spend them are. It, I don't think it's purely scientific is what I'm saying. I think it's gonna be up to us to do a smart, intuitive, good interpretation. Does that make sense? Yeah, does anybody have any thoughts about when I should be giving you this information? I mean, I could probably upload it by the end of the week so that everybody can see what's there already. Doesn't matter to me. I, 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 I think the sooner the better. Why, yeah. you know, why not? Okay. I, when I was in there, I was looking around and there was something I clicked on that said share. So if I can share it so that you guys can just click in there and look, that would be the easiest thing. That's my yeah. hope. Um, I know there was concern about releasing the username and password to the group. So I don't think that that's something that um, the administration wants me to do. But if I can just share this one survey so that everybody can click in and see the results, that's definitely what I'll do. Could, could it be like put in, just put into the file and we could see it that way? Yeah, I can download it as an Excel spreadsheet. I can download it as a PDF in different, like each question has the statistics associated with it, how many people responded, how many answers were yes, how many answers were no, for the ones that were multiple choice, how many people responded, all that sort of stuff. So it's 16 pages, uh, the first thing that I downloaded. 
but I'll fiddle around with it and see what I can't put in our drive. Good. Anything else um, on this part? With the survey, um, it just reminds me that maybe we have some house cleaning to take care of, like with the Google Drive, should we um, remove Jean and Matt from access to that and um, include Glenn instead and the email addresses that are part of the ARPA committee when someone sends something to the ARPA committee and it goes to each of us, should Jean and Matt be removed from that, from that and Glenn put on and whoever um, becomes the, the new members can be added. Um, I don't know if Barbara, you can take care of that house cleaning. If I can't, then Jean will have to do it because she's the one that set up that email. So I'm not sure, but I will yeah. see how I can get that done. Yeah, it, something like that, what I would imagine would just be routine protocol. Jean may have already done it. I don't know. Not as of yesterday. Okay. Because when you click on the group email for ARPA committee, you can expand it and you can still see Matt and Jean's email in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk. She probably just didn't think of it. I'll ask her. Good. We're good. So moving on. Number uh, number eight, status and planning of the focus groups. Um, do we need to discuss that any further? January 22nd, we've got how many focus groups and how is that going to work? Hmm. Well, one thing I wanted to bring up about focus groups was we planned um, six of them, five in person, one via Zoom. And given conditions, I'm going to throw out that I think we need to do all of the focus groups via Zoom now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see how we can have any in-person focus groups where people can take off masks to have a drink or you usually have beverages and snacks at these things. And, you know, I don't, I, I just think it's, in our and all of the people who participate's best interest to make them virtual, all of them. I agree. I, I agree. Um, I agree with that too, but here's the thing. Logistically, how, how would you be able to, um, you know, to tie all this together if there's so many different focus groups being done on Zoom? Would that be a problem? They, they'd have to happen one at a time or maybe two at a time, but probably one at a time. Yeah. I mean, our intention was to run two simultaneously. Mm -hmm. One was going to be um, um, a sort of Barbara Connie thing and a Jean I thing. And Joe was gonna go back and forth. Um, and we were going to do them upstairs and downstairs at the same time so that we could do all six in one Saturday. Um, I don't know why we couldn't do that same choreography with Zoom. Right? I think we can, yeah. Oh, if, if you had like um, breaks between each, each meeting to kind of set up if you have to reset things you know i guess that yeah i think we had made like uh i don't know connie do you remember i think it was like an hour between each one for bathroom breaks and reset up and lunch and that kind of stuff yeah there was time that we built in mm -hmm. I, I mean i think we can handle it on zoom and i don't really think it'll be all that different in terms of coordinating how we tie it together than it would be if it were, you know, if it were in person. Live, I just yeah. Think, 
focus groups in general are better in person, but we can't do it that way right now. So uh, I also, I purchased Menti as a consultant. So Patricia, we can think about whether we ever wanted to use that. Um, it you is, purchased a what, Connie? Menti. It's software that allows people to all feedback at once and to read it on a screen. Someone oh, that's person. interesting. Yeah, we can. I'll, I'll maybe you and I can connect offline and see if it works at all. But I, I even if it's a, if it's a small group having a conversation, just like we're having, um, it will work. I think so. I mean, people are getting more used to having conversations um, via Zoom. So I think that. Um, I don't see any problem. I think it can work just fine. I um, <clears throat> I have a um, a comment on um, for the focus groups now. Um, it's uh, three to four thirty p.m. Uh, it says um, there's an A and a B, and it says social services. So how would how would this um, go now with um, with the social services in transit, so to speak. In other words, with one one um, social service head leaving and another one coming in, how, how would how would that go? I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think whoever, if we can get someone from the Kent Community Fund on our panel, then they're going to be. The focus of that meeting, or they're going to have a lot to bring to that focus group, I should say. Leah yes, will already be gone by. That's a great said. point, actually. That is an yeah. excellent point. Having someone from the community fund will be really helpful in making that focus group clients of social services um, meaningful and productive. Yeah, I was going to say because you you know you may have qu um, questions asked, you know, and you know who knows uh, if if the answer would be, you know, would fit for the question if it's not someone that's in charge of the social service department in town. Well, I believe we have an interim who will be transitioning in and by the 22nd Leah will already be gone so that person who's been tapped to be the transition person maybe she would participate as well I don't know we could ask her Judy is um a very accommodating, cooperative, collaborative woman so I imagine she would be um agreeable to helping us out. Hey, I'm sure you guys are aware, but the um, Kent Memorial Library is having their annual meeting that afternoon at two o'clock. I don't know how many people that would impact. They usually, depending on the topic, attract, you know, 20 to 40 people. But it's supposed to start at two. And they're, they've advertised it as in person. I don't know if that's still going to hold. But. Um, thank you're you. Welcome. That's good information to know. We may want to modify our date. Yeah, we so had a guys. we had a rain date of the 29th. Yeah, but the library is doing something else on the 29th. They're doing focus groups. So the 29th isn't going to be a good alternative either. Uh, you know, I one of the things about Zoom is you could actually do it whenever. And so it may be that we want to flex the schedule a little bit, um, because I do imagine that we have some overlap, uh, at least with some of these groups, with the library's annual meeting. What are their focus groups on the 29th for? They're, they're doing a centennial, and then I think they're starting to think about the future and, oh. and how they want to, you know, so how they want to raise money. <laughs> so there's no, no way we can piggyback on that. Okay. <laughs> um, how many um, people all told have signed up to participate in focus groups? Do you know, Barbara? I don't. 
I am, I just, from off the top of my head, I only had maybe half a dozen people who said they were interested at this point. So we're, and I think this put us a little bit. We, end, having we may the, end up having one focus group at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah, well, we had, we were going to invite people. Yes, yeah. that's so true. We were. That's yeah. we had a lot of ways and we weren't really beating the rugs because we wanted to think more about who was who was important to have at the table, which we probably should still do. Yeah. And we're still okay with our six, our groups, our five groups. I am, yeah. Am I in a group now? <laughs> um, well, you could be in the um, general citizen taxpayer group. You could be in the you know, business owner, service business owner, like, I don't know, an accountant or a local lawyer or a yoga teacher or, I don't know, Casey from the hair salon. And then we had another group, which was restaurants and retail. Um, people, clients of social services. And I think senior citizens. senior citizens. Yeah. Yeah. Business. Um, office. And did we have young families with children? Well, we because figured we that was going to fall under social service, I think. We didn't have a specific one for them. Right, right. We had six. And the, I had senior citizens, business, not-for-profit, service provider, basic taxpayer, and social service. That's what I had. That's what I have also. Yeah. I don't think we've divvied them up yet as to who was going to oh. do which groups. I don't yeah, think that, we've that's what I meant. that yet. <laughs> that's what I meant. And so far we have 12 people interested. No, I think it was more like half a dozen, six. <laughs> half, six. But okay. as Connie pointed out, our goal was to invite specific representatives that could represent these different yeah. platforms. I, I, have a, um, <clears throat> I have a question on, um, it says um, for three to 4.30 PM service providers, um, what, who would who is um, who would service providers be? Who would be in that group? Just what I listed, Joe, like um, a hairstylist or an accountant in town, or oh, um, or business. a yoga teacher, and she couldn't do her classes, and her whole business, you know, went down the tubes because of that, or um, you know, people that have businesses in town that are not a store or a restaurant. Oh, I see businesses, I see, yeah. They provide a service. You pay someone to provide a service, any kind of service, house I cleaners, yeah. any, any kind of service. Got it. Mm -hmm. So what are we thinking yeah, we about? Yeah, we didn't want to forget that group of people because they're significant. You know, we have some gyms, we have some, um, the, these people are trying to, have been trying to make a living here in Kent too. So we didn't want to um, just think of business owners in terms of people who have storefronts or restaurant fronts. So in terms of the day, if the 22nd is filled with the library and so is the 29th, do we want to look for another day? Do you think we can do, do you think we could pull this off on the same day as those events? I think that's asking too much of our general public. Yeah. I wasn't suggesting- well, Do you know how many people usually done. go? Two o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and it's only, their thing is usually only an hour to an hour and a half. So it's not like it's taking up the whole day. No, mm -hmm. but we yeah. were gonna have six committees. We were gonna have six focus groups, so. Um, does this have to be on a Saturday? Could it be on a Sunday also? I mean, if it's on, if it's on uh, 
uh, say there's something going on at the library on Saturday, can uh, one of, can you know some of the focus groups be done on a Sunday of that same weekend? I mean, is that possible? It is, I think, but I would prefer to only have it on a Saturday and not have it touch a Sunday. Hmm. Yeah, Personal. that's a day when people, I don't know, Sunday seems like the people have all kinds of feelings about Sundays. So it's a religious thing. It's a family day. It's a day to... Um, I don't know. Saturday feels more appropriate to me. Okay. So could we have it on the 22nd after, after the library event? Or at least? I think that's going to be too much. Too much. Too much. Yeah. It's going to be three hours worth of meetings, and that's yeah. double meetings, plus some time in between each meeting. Yeah. It'd be all, no. We, we need a full day. I think we really do. So I think we're going to have yeah, to. I mean, an off. average focus group will take 90 minutes. Yeah, we're okay. going to have to push it off to February 5th, maybe. I don't know. February 5th. Is there anything happening on that day? <laughs> Not on my calendar yet. <laughs> Are we comfortable moving it to that day? I am. Um, could I could I just make a comment um, now? Um, there's. Um, I remember something was said at one of the meetings about a form, some form reporting form that has to go in in March sometime. Um, you know, some paperwork or whatever. Yeah. So um, would it be a good idea to kind of like have a lot of, you know, some of most of this work um, that we're discussing now, you know, done before the paperwork has to go in rather than rush anything? No, I don't think it matters because the reporting is only to tell them what we've been up to and where we are. They, they don't care if we have any measurable deliverables at that time. That answer your question? Well, it does, but I mean, you know, um, uh, I don't want to get into it, but there's the matter of the emergency management, uh, you know, um, situation for the ARPA funds connected to that and so forth. Um, you know, um, thinking of like deadlines for other, you know, uses of ARPA funds that may may occur. So whatever, I don't want to bring that up today. During I'm not this sure if you're up to speed on that. That allocation has been rolled back. There are no allocations now currently on our ARPA funds. So that emergency management is not on our table right now. Okay, so they don't have a timeline where they have to, um, uh, you know, um, have form have money committed for for their needs, um, you know, by a certain time is what I'm asking. Even yeah. if they do, it has no bearing on our work here. Yeah, and that goes for emergency management and the um, the hybrid technology for the town hall, both of those not using ARPA funds right now. But what I'm saying is that somewhere else down the line, if that were to happen, if, you know, if, if use of those funds were, um, were brought up. I'm not sure I'm following you, but as far I as the reporting we're... goes in March, we're all set. Hey, so, so the okay. reporting that Barbara does is so is separate from our committee. So our committee is meant to make recommendations for the use of the ARPA funds, but Barbara does reporting that is, you know, on behalf of the town 
and the funds that that the funds don't actually have to be allocated for a long while, which is not an argument to delay. But I don't think that we need to let Barbara's reporting schedule uh, rush us. Yeah. No, the, the only reason why I brought this up is that I, you know, I'm I see and I hear um, about what other towns, you know, how they're progressing and 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 so forth, and it seems to be that that Kent is, you know, there at what at one point, and Kent is not out of the gate yet, so to speak. At an at, at you know at the point where Ken is at, does that make any sense? It does, but I'm not sure it really has any bearing on our work. I mean, Joe, towns have each done it their um, own way. Some towns have not created ARPA committees. Some towns have not. Um, talked to their community members about um, what they think should be done with the ARPA funds. Some have just um, made some decisions presented to, to the town at a town meeting. They've gotten a yay or an A and they're done. We chose to do it a different way, which may seem longer, um, but it was designed to, to start from the ground up and have our recommendations grow out of, um, straight out of the community and what we hear from the community. So that's why we elected at the start to do the surveys, do the focus groups, um, and do it differently. I know that Goshen, for example, hasn't done any of that. Um, and um, they've just sort of decided on the selectman basis how they want to spend the money and hope for the best with the federal government. So I think every town is different and you can't really compare them. Yes, I um, I agree. Here's here's what I'm, um, um, and, you know, here's an, another uh, the point that I um, that I'm getting at is that um, as far as I know, there is a request that has that is on file from emergency management for uh, for funding. So um, that's on file and. Um, you know where that goes from 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 here is is um, is a question mark. Well, I'm not aware of a request made by the emergency management team to the ARPA committee. Are you, Barbara or Connie? I am not. So. I'm not sure what you're asking, Joe. The um, emergency management has not um, gone on record with a request for ARPA funds that I know. Well, um, I don't know. Um, maybe Glenn can answer this clearer than than I than 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 what I'm, you know, than what I'm saying. Because um, I don't want to beat a dead horse either. Is that um, the way I understood things? Is that the request for emergency management was sent to the ARPA committee to be on file? I mean, am I wrong about that, or I think so. I've not seen anything like that. Um, so if they did, and I was looking in the Google Drive yesterday, I didn't see anything like that. I don't think any specific request has come through. I know we got um, a letter from the um, Chamber of Commerce. I have seen some requests um, 
for consideration, but I've not seen one from emergency management. Neither. Yeah, and this is my first time on this committee and I still have yet to get into that Google Drive to see what's come in. So um, I'll go with you all. There, ne there never was. There was a mention that one might be coming in early October and then it never did. So there, there, there never was any paperwork sent to the ARPA committee in, in, that, in no. that regard. No, correct. There was nothing. Okay, well, that clarifies things. Just out of curiosity, are you guys open to submissions? I'm not well, sure. That's been what I mean, people public. tell me all the time um, what they think that we should use the money for. And I tell everyone the same thing um, contact the committee, send a letter, fill out a survey or participate in a focus group, make your position known somehow, and we'll consider that with all the other um, requests and uh, for consideration we get. And as I said, we have gotten one from, I remember the Chamber of Commerce and at least one other one. It may have been the yeah. library. I don't I know. Think, I think we got one from a business owner who had a B and B. Well, um, there, there is, um, um, there's, they're not requests, but there's paper documentation. I'll say, uh, from uh, HVA and uh, Northwest um, Transit, or whatever it's called. Um, you know. Um, Oh, yes, but, you're right, Joe. The Housatonic yeah. Valley Association sent something. You're correct. But there, um, <laughs> but Patricia, there's no, um, there's no application process per se. So, I mean, there, there is no way for them to, to request anything at this point, anyhow. That's and exactly that's right. Barbara did a really good job of replying to people who sent us submissions. There, I mean, there's there's no reason someone couldn't send a submission making a case, but we're not in this committee. We don't have a process for, and we would never be allocating actual funds. So, uh, you know, I, I I don't know that it would be that useful for people to make a proposal to us. Uh, you know, and and the object was always to find out from the community first what the needs were before developing that process. So everyone would need to wait anyway. And that's, that, that's why those things are on file, but we haven't discussed them. Yeah, that's why I keep referring to it as consideration that, you know, I think you're right. People can submit some sort of something in writing that says, um, I think the money would be well spent this way. And it goes in the packet of all the material we're collecting from the community for fair consideration along with all the others. <laughs> and my dog is getting bored with the, with the Zoom meeting as you can hear, sorry about that. Oh, we need Connie back quick. We're, we're at an hour. Time to go. <laughs> so, your meetings were at an hour, right? Okay. That's let's, it. Let's, uh, yeah, we're, we're really sticklers about that. Okay, then let's. Um, so, so to finish up number eight, if we can, that those focus groups, are we going to consider Saturday, February 5th that we decided? Sure. And I think, you know, okay. We've been having, previously we were having meetings weekly, segueing right into uh, number 10, kind of skipping over number nine. So if we have a meeting next week and the Board of Selectmen appoint Connie tomorrow, and then if we get the other two people, then we can discuss it in earnest when we have the full board and set the date, I think. Okay. So we'll um, set the next meeting up for next Wednesday at 4.30 and then discuss idea. a future schedule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good. So Wednesday, so a week from today? Yep. Yep. All right. So uh, the 12th, uh, 4.30 again, this is a good time? 
Yep. Yep. Okay, Wednesday, January 12th at 4.30. Okay, anything else before we adjourn? Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience and thank you for, uh, for everything. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. So we adjourn at 5.36. <laughs>